If you had sons and daughters, and I came into your property, kicked your door in, boom, snatched your kids up, and gave them to another people, what is that called? That's called what? Oh, so, sla so slavery is in the Bible. God told the children of Israel, if y'all break these commandments, I'm going to put you in slavery. So if we're not African American and we're not black, who are we? Bring it out. Hold that and give me uh, Isaiah real quick. Who are we? Because what we're showing you is that this is recorded in the scriptures that the people known as blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans today will lose their nationality and be called by a different name. Our true name is the children of Israel. That's Judah. Right. Judah, like you said on the sign. This is what God calls us. But read this. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. Read it up. The ox knoweth his owner. So God is about to compare his people that he chose, which are you, to two animals. He said, an ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib. We're talking about two dumb animals, a donkey and an ass. Come on. But Israel, but the children of Israel, Judah, Benjamin, Levi, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, but the children of Israel doth not know. Uh -huh. My people doth not consider. All our lives, we've been walking this earth, and we haven't considered what our true nationality is. How old are you? 14? So for 14 years, you thought you were African-American. You're not African. Don't you know the term African-American came up in the early 1980s? Jesse Jackson coined us African-Americans. What? How can our nationality, how old are you, brother? 43. How can you be older than your nationality? That don't make sense. Bring it up. It doesn't make, you cannot be older than your nationality. Your nationality can't, as long as we've been on this earth, we have a name that God gave us. But we've been going by a name that only sprung up in the early 1980s, African American. What we're showing you is that you're not African American. You are the children of God. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Now I'm going to show you something. Because our pastors in the churches, they don't teach us this. We go to church every Sunday. Never have you heard that you're an Israelite and you must keep God's commandments. Read what you got. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So the children of Israel, y'all know the story about Moses taking the children of Israel out of, out of the land of Egypt? You saw that? Probably the movie with Charlton, what is his name? Charlton Hester, when he, he, he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. Those were our people. He said, what, read that again? For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. You're holy, you're a real princess. Now that might fly through your princess. No, you are a God living, breathing, walking the earth, real princess. You sisters are princesses. This brother's a God. But you think growing up in this society is gonna teach you that? No, society is not gonna teach you that you're the greatest people that ever walked the earth. Right. God said that you are a holy people, come on. Unto the Lord thy God. Unto God, come on. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So God chose the children of Israel, you blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, to be a special people unto himself. But when we look into society right now, do we feel like we're above all people or special to God? When we're shot down in the street, when we're the last hired, the first fired, are we, are we special? Does this society treat us as, as such? No. But go on, read. Above God said that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are what? Above! That the children of Israel are what? Above all people! They're upon the face of the earth! Wait a minute. So the Bible just said that you princesses, that this brother, this God, is above all people on the face of the earth. But in society, when we look out here, do we see that? Why? That is the question. If God said that you are above all people, why are you now on the bottom? 
Let me ask you. In a house you have upstairs, you have downstairs, you have the basement. You want, would you like to live in the basement? Don't nobody want to be in the basement, right? But in society, we are in the basement. We are in the base, we are the basest people in society. You go to our neighborhoods, our na do your neighborhoods look like their neighborhoods? No. Pookie probably got shot down last week. Ray Ray on the corner selling drugs. But you're not gonna see that in their communities. You know why? Because something happened. God said that he chose us to be above all people. He gave us laws, statutes, and commandments. Give me Deuteronomy 6 and 25, right? That's what I want? Righteousness? Read that. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 25. Listen up. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all the commandments before the Lord our God. So God said it's going to be our righteousness. This is what is going to be our righteousness. If we observe to do all the commandments of the Lord our God. Now go to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Remember, I want you to hold this thought. What is our righteousness, brother? To do the commandments of God, right? What is our righteousness? To do the commandments of God. Now watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass. Now God is telling the children of Israel, this is going to come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Remember, the voice of God said that his laws is our righteousness. If we don't listen to the voice of our God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, God said, if you keep the commandments, I'm going to put you above, set you on high above all people. But if you break these commandments, I'm going to put you at the bottom of society. Right. That's what we just read. He said, if we, uh, read it again, read that whole verse again. But it shall come to pass, uh -huh. if thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. If we don't listen. To observe, to do all the commandments and statutes which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now these curses are going to identify a people because we broke God's commandments. That's why we are in the bottom of society right now, because we broke the commandments. We're breaking the commandments today, which is the Lord's Sabbath day. We're not taught that. We're taught that tomorrow, go to church. No, today is the Lord's Sabbath day. So God said, these curses are going to come upon us if we broke the commandments, right? Let's find out some of these curses. Give me verse 32. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Look on the front of your flyer. Look on the very front of the flyer. God says that the children of Israel, if you break these commandments, what he said? Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. What is that called? Today, we got we call, we, they call them, uh, what do they call it, DSS? DSS? DSS and Child Protective Services. That's what they call it today. But let's take this back 400, 500 years ago. Read it again. It's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. If you had sons and daughters, and I came into your property, kicked your door in, boom, snatched your kids up, and gave them to another people, what is that called? That's called what? Slavery. Oh, so, sla right. so slavery is in the Bible. God told the children of Israel, if y'all break these commandments, I'm going to put you in slavery. She got one, bro. I got one. She, he said, if you break these commandments, I'm going to put you in slavery. Look on the front of the flyer. I want you to tell me this. Let, let's do a process of elimination. Did that happen to the so-called white man? No. Did that happen to the so-called Chinese man? No. Did that happen to the, uh, uh, give me some more people, Arab man? No, who did that happen to? That only happened to black people. That, that means that the, that the people in the Bible are who? They are the Israelites. They are the children of Israel. Right. Now you're learning what has happened to us. Now, let's go to verse... Well, fi finish that, finish that. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Come on. And that eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. Y'all ever seen the movie Roots? Bring it out. You seen Roots? When they took Kizzy away from her mother and father, what could her father do to get Kizzy back? His, her father could do nothing. He could cry, he cried, cried, cried. Have y'all seen 12 Years a Slave? Bring it out. Y'all gotta go watch these movies. It's important because your history is right in your face. It's right in your face. But we don't analyze it because society has transformed and desensitized us to think that, oh, you know, it's okay. Slavery was way back then. Right. They tell you don't worry about slavery, but in two months, they're going to be celebrating what? 
That's right. Never forget 9-11, but forget what happened to your people. Don't ever forget what happened to your people. Right. The right. atrocities that we went through on this earth, on this side of the earth, they served for something. We were brought here to serve because we broke God's commandments. Right. We are his people. Right. He is going to redeem us, but only when we come back to keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments. Right. Yes, read that. And that I shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, uh -huh. and there shall be no might in thine head. There will be no power in your hand to get your children back. Now jump to verse 45. I want to show you something. Because what this sign right here say? What this sign say? How do I know this watch the street? Because the sign says it, right? No, I'm going to show you something. Remember, what are we discussing in the book of Deuteronomy? The curses that happen to what? To who? The children of Israel, black people. Now, let's jump to verse 45. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 45. Your pastor ain't going to do this. This gospel is not about collecting money. That's it's right. about collecting souls for the kingdom of heaven. Right. Your right. souls. You're not going to get there because you can go give pastor $100 a week. That don't get you the kingdom of heaven. What's going to get you the kingdom of heaven is learning this Bible, repenting, and keeping God's commandments. Right. Chapter verse 45. Moreover, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed. Until thou be destroyed. So, we're going to read that again, right? So, do you have chains on your necks now? Do you have chains on your ankles now? No. So, I want you to pay attention to the key words that this Bible is using. We see a lot of our people, we think we are phoneticians. We, are, we don't understand basic English. You got to listen to the key words that are being spoken in the Bible. Read it again. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee. So God told the children of Israel, all these curses are going to come upon you and shall pursue you till thou be destroyed. Until you are destroyed. The key word in that is until you are destroyed. Hold that thought. Until you are destroyed. Read. Because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Because we didn't hearken to the voice of God. God told us what? Keep the Sabbath day holy. We didn't do that. Much like today. Today is the Sabbath day. We should be keeping the holy. But we don't know how to because the pastors of the churches have not told us and taught us how to. So therefore, we err and we break God's commandments because we don't have the understanding that our pastors are supposed to give us. Read on. To keep his commandments and the statutes which he commanded thee, and they shall be upon thee for a sign. So God told the children of Israel that the curses that I'm going to put you through, they are going to be upon you for a sign. What does a sign do? A sign what? It identifies. The sign right here identifies this as Washington Street. The sign over here identifies this as Main Street. The sign on this building identifies it as the Sheridan. The sign for the children of Israel is that you're going to be able to look into society and see a people that are suffering from the curses of God. Right. Who are suffering the curses of God? Let's do the process of elimination again. Are Chinese people suffering from the curses of God? No. They ain't suffering. Are Arabs suffering from the curses of God? Nope. Are the so-called white men of today suffering from the curses of God? No. Nope. Look at them. They ain't suffering no damn curses. They enjoying life. But when you go back home, is you worried about your light bill? Right. Is you worried about your rent? Right. Is you worried about whether your son is going to end up in the street and get put to death tomorrow? Is you worried about if you're going to have a job next week? It's you that are suffering the curses of God because you right. are the children of God. Right. Read. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder uh -huh. and upon thy seed forever. So God said that you're going to be able to identify the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans as the children of Israel because the sign is they are suffering the curses that are put upon them. That's no right. other people are suffering the curses that God put upon them. And this is what our men have to realize. What you see standing before you today is the awakening of the black man in America. That's what you right. see standing before you today is men that have the spirit of Lord put on them to come out to the streets boldly and teach their people that you are the most important people on the earth. Right. That there's no other people on the earth greater than you. But right. you must bethink yourself and remember that you are the children of God. That's Read. right. What you got? Read down. Read down. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Remember, God gave us everything. He gave us every This tree, this tree, brother, it belongs to you. They, all of these people out here, guess what? They belong to you. Right. They belong to you. 
Now, the average black man there said, hold on, man, I don't think I, I don't think I own these people. Go back again. Go back again to Deuteronomy 7 and 6. Yes, the people belong to you too. God put the black man above all people on the earth. He gave us rulership. He gave us ownership. He told us to go out, rule it in righteousness. But our people don't know how to rule it in righteousness. That's why chaos is all over the earth. That's why we have brothers killing each other. Gang bangers on every corner in our hoods. Right. Because we don't understand that we are the gods of the earth. Read that again. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. Come on. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. Come on. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. Listen up, bro. He's to be. Chosen. What's your name? What's your name, brother? What's your name? What's your name? Mello. Mello. God said he chose Mello, come on, to be a special people unto himself. Hold on, wait a minute. Unto myself. Unto himself. Unto yourself. Unto himself. God chose the black man to be a special people to be a special man unto himself. Remember, he made man in his image and after his likeness. I got a question for my people. What color was the first man? Bring it up. What color was the first man? Mello, you're on. What color was the first man on earth? How we know that? Give me, give me, give me, give me Genesis 2 and 7. I'm gonna show you that this book is ours, that the people in the book are our people. Read what you got. It's the book of Genesis, chapter two, verse seven. Come on. And the Lord God for a man of the dust of the ground. Now, what color is the dust of the ground right there? What color is the dust of the ground? It says God for a man from the dust of the ground. Well, what color is it? Brown. It's what? Brown. The, deeper, the deeper you dig, the darker it gets. That's right. The first man on earth was the so-called black man. This is our planet. That's right. This belongs to us. God made us to rule us. But we got to come back to a God-like mindset. So, if God told us to rule it, and it's out of order now, how do we get it back? How do we get it back? That's the question. How do we get our kingdom? How do we get our rulership back? What about you, brother? You got an answer for that? How do we get our oh, kingdom man, back? You ain't got nothing I'm going to show you. You see that? See? You see that? You this is the man. problem. But I'm going to tell y'all sisters something. I'm going to tell y'all sisters something. Not everybody's going to receive this word. You, know, you see that? Everybody can receive this word. The mere fact that you're standing here right now says that the Most High God put something in your spirit to hearken. Remember, when we go back to Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 58, I mean 15, uh, 15, hearken means to what? To listen. Hearken means to listen. That's why he said, therefore, if thou shalt not hearken, if you don't listen to what God is saying, then you're going to suffer the punishment. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 48. Come on. Therefore, Shalt thou serve thine enemies? Remember, when you look at on the front of the flyer, what happened to us? We broke the commandments. God is putting us in slavery now because we broke the commandments. He said what? Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies? Because you broke the commandments, now you're going to serve who? Thine enemies. You're going to serve your friends. Thine enemies. The people that put you on slave ships and brought you to America were your friends. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies? God said because the black man Black woman, Hispanic man, Hispanic woman, Native American man, and Native American woman broke his commandments. Therefore, now you're going to serve your enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So they ain't thinking they own mind to come over there and pick us up off of Africa, off of the African Bring continent. It up. Read that again. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. You see that? So God put it in their spirit to go and put us into captivity. This is what we're reading. He said, which what? Which the Lord shall send against thee. Which God sent against us. Come on. In hunger and in thirst. When you're hungry and you want something to drink, you're going to serve your enemies. Where you get that water from? Get out. Down the street right there? Did you buy it from your people? Nope. Bought it from your enemies, didn't you? That's in the Bible. Read it again. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. In hunger and hunger. Where you get that popcorn from? Down the street? From your people? Nope. From another nation, right? From your enemy. Therefore, you're going to serve your enemy in what? In hunger. In hunger. And in thirst. And for water. And in nakedness. Where you get your clothes from? J.C. Penny, the mall. Where you get it from? That's where you got it from? Who owned that? The huh? The enemy. The enemy. Well, say it again, sister. The you're in the spirit. You're all the way in the spirit. Because it ain't saying your friend. It ain't saying your homeboy, your homegirl. It said your enemy. That means... Even though we are in society with these people, guess what?
God still says, they're your enemy. Because when an enemy, look on the front of the flyer. When an enemy drag you, when a, when a friend drag you down in the streets and put chains on you. Bring it out. When a friend put a ball and chain around your ankle so that you can't move. When a friend put uh rape your mother. Bring it out. Rape your father. Disperse households. Would a friend do that? Would a friend take a pregnant sister, tie her to a horse, tie one leg to a horse going this way, one leg to a horse going this way, and beat the horses on the butt and rip her guts wide open? Would a friend do that? Bring it up. That's what happened to your people in slavery. That's what happened to our black women. That's why our women today, they are a little bugged out of their mind when it comes to dealing with the black man because they have put us against each other. They made us think that, that we're the enemies. No. God said that your enemies shall what? You will serve your enemies for what? In hunger and in thirst Come on. and in nakedness Come on. and in want of all things. In want of all things. Food, clothing, shelter, water. Anything you want. Toothpaste, toothbrush. You want to die, you need a death certificate. You want to be born, you need a birth certificate. You want to drive, you need a driver's license. Anything that you want, you're going to serve your enemies. Where does the majority of your stuff come from? It comes from another nation. Bring it it comes from your, it don't come from your people. We have to start coming back to who we are as a people. That's God right. said that you're going to serve them in one of all things. Come on. And he shall put it. Hold on. And what? And he. God said it. So this is a, a physical person. God said, and he. He didn't say a spirit. He said, and he. Who is the he? Who is the he? The he is the enemy. That's yes. Right. The he. Remember, remember the text. Let's let's go back up and read the text. Pay that no attention. That's Satan trying to distract you because you're learning something. Go back up to enemy. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. Therefore thou shalt thou serve thine enemies. Now jump back down. And he, and he, your enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Remember I said hold that thought until he have destroyed thee. Look on the front of your flyer. He put a yoke of iron upon your neck until he has destroyed thee. Look at this. These are yokes of iron. Name another people on earth that had yokes of iron on their neck. Bring it up. I'm waiting. I, I, don't worry, I'll wait. If you can name one other nation of people that had yokes of iron upon their neck, we will shut down, go to camp, and not read this Bible again. Bring it up. We will leave camp. You know what? That ain't going to happen. Because no other people suffered the curses that you went through as a people. That shows you. Remember, the curses do what? Identify. The curses are the sign that identifies you as God's chosen people. Go ahead, it says, go ahead. and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he has destroyed you. So there ain't no yokes of iron on your neck right now. What does that mean? Bring it out. That means we've been destroyed. How are we destroyed? Now we don't know that we're the Israelites according to the Bible. Now that we don't, we don't know that we're the children of God. We think we black and we think we African-American. We are now destroyed. But today, sisters, today, brother, you have learned that you are not black. You are not an African-American. Right. You are the greatest people to ever walk this earth. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.